Hey everybody, my name is Joseph. Today I'm going to show you how to set up Blender 3D so that we can render out a Google Cardboard video and upload it to YouTube. As a start, let's make a new scene. So reload our startup file. Mine might look a little different from yours, but that's okay. It's all the same steps. Let's go ahead and, as a start, go to File, User Preferences, and make sure that we have a CUDA compute device selected. The reason for this is that we have to use the Cycles Renderer, and if we are not using our, C, uh, our CUDA device, it's going to be a fair bit slower. You can use your CPU if you don't have a CUDA capable device, but again, it's going to save you a whole bunch of time if you can just go ahead and select CUDA, select your graphics card, and then go ahead and save things out. The next thing that we want to do is change from Blender Renderer to our Cycles Renderer. And you'll notice that uh, the lighting seems to have changed in our scene. Way back then, just a second. Next thing we want to do is uh, go ahead and select our camera icon. That's the third option from the right. And go ahead and change it from perspective to panoramic. We're also going to change the type from fisheye uh, equisolid to equa rectangular. The reason for this is Google's metadata tool is expecting an equa rectangular video, or uh, expecting the format to be equa rectangular. After that, we're going to jump over to the scene settings and change, uh, check the view box right here. You'll see that Stereo 3D is kind of the default, so basically we're done in that case. This, however, unlocks some more options back in the camera settings. So we have stereoscopy and our pivot. Uh, the default values for stereoscopy are fine. Uh, off axis is perfect. Intraocular distance of uh, six centimeters is just perfect. The pivot specifies whether or not it's your left eye or your right eye that the camera's position dictates. I'm partial to center, but this is really a matter of personal preference. If you want to specify where the user's left eye is, that's fine. Next, we're going to jump over to our render settings. And let's change our device from CPU to GPU. And then go ahead and turn up our resolution a little bit so that things look good when we do our actual render. You can leave that set at 50% if you Please, that's going to mean your previews are going a little bit faster. Uh, but if you forget to do that and render out your whole video and then discover, oh, it's half resolution, then it'll probably ruin your day. Next, we're going to change our views format from individual to stereo 3D. This is very, very important. Um, we're also going to switch our stereo mode from anaglyph to top bottom. You can use side by side as well. Uh, that doesn't matter a whole bunch. There's a checkbox that we'll talk about later. Uh, I prefer top bottom because when I'm previewing it in VLC or before actually getting to cardboard, if I use left right, then I have a really, really, really wide video that doesn't fit very well on my monitor. And top bottom just happens to squish that data to be a, a little bit easier. It means it's a more square video. So, with that done, uh, I'm also going to turn up my frame rate to 30 frames per second. And I'm also going to show you the output settings that you need or the export settings that you need. What we want to do is change our file format from PNG to MPEG, not H.264. And I'll get into this in just a second. What, we go, uh, what we're going to do next is change our encoding from MPEG2 to MPEG4 and our codec to H.264. The MPEG4 right here in the format specifies the container format. And that could be AVI or MP4, but Google specifications say that we want an MP4 container with an H.264 codec. Uh, I'm also going to check lossless output because I'm I'm making a short video. If you find that you're running out of memory or disk space, then go ahead and uncheck that. And the audio codec should be AAC. And again, this is just per Google specifications. All right, so that all seems well and good. So let's build a test scene that'll let us uh, see this really quickly. First, I'm going to move my cube off to the side, so G, X, and maybe 2. And I'm going to move it up also, G, Z, 1, just so it's sitting flat on the ground. And I figure I'll add an array modifier just so that we can get some depth to this scene. So 2, 0, that looks good to me. Let's make this 100. I'm going to duplicate this object now, so shift D, and then move it, G, X, I'll say minus 4, that looks good to me. And an important bit, I'm going to step into the side view, uh, I'll hit Alt-G, Alt-R to reset the 
location and the rotation of the camera. And I'm going to rotate it R x minus 90. Oops. Wrong. R x 180. So uh, we want this to be pointing flat to the right because our camera is going to be moving along this row of items. And if we're moving our camera in a direction that does not match the direction we're looking by default, it'll make some people a little bit motion sick. The orientation doesn't matter a whole bunch, but the direction of the camera specifies the front and center of the video. So uh, I prefer to just keep it going in uh, the direction that it's moving. And I'm going to bring it up by one, so GZ1. All right, now I'm going to hit F12 and just do a preview render really quickly. One thing that you'll notice is uh, after this is finished, we're going to get some, uh, this, this sequence is red, that's very unusual. And the next one that pops on top of this is going to be blue. And you might say, hey, that's, that's not cool. Why is it rendering an anaglyph when we very clearly specify top, bottom, stereo? And the reason for that is this is just a preview window. In reality, the, you can set the stereo 3D settings right here. If you go into Window, Set Stereo 3D Settings, and change the display mode. I'm going to leave it set to anaglyph because I happen to like that for the preview. It makes me happy. If your graphic card is powerful enough, you can do time sequential, which is sort of the jump back and forth left to right look to it. But that requires a card that has quad offering available, and mine doesn't. So anaglyph stereo it is. Again, uh, we said in our outperformance that we didn't want anaglyphs or we wanted top bottom. But you'll see here we've got a little faint blue in the corner and red on some of the other edges as a function of depth. But all things considered, uh, this looks pretty good. One thing that I'd like, though, is I'm going to add a floor and maybe an above headlight just so that we get a little more, uh, I'll say, interesting detail in the scene. So I'll cancel out, cancel out of this render, get rid of that default light, and go ahead and add a floor plane. Scale of X, scale of Y by a whole bunch. And I'm going to go back into perspective so I can move this down really far. That looks good to me. And I'm going to add another plane, move it up. That's GZ, so that is really far ahead. Uh, really far above it, and I'm also going to move it down the track a little bit and change the material so that we have some source of light in the scene. So new material, light mesh, and I'm going to change that type to an emitter. I'm sorry, emission. And I'll turn up the strength on that a little bit. In the interest of time, I'm also going to turn this down to maybe 25%. How does that look? Uh, that looks okay to me. A little higher, 50%. Yeah, that looks good. Now, bear in mind, if you don't forget changes all the way to 100%. Um, I, in my case, I'm going to leave it 50 just because I, I want to render through uh, really quickly when I'm iterating. Just don't forget to change it back. The next thing that I'm going to do is add a little bit of animation to this. So let me jump over to frame one. Set my keyframe group to be location. I'm not going to do any rotation. Uh, I would advise against that if you can. And go ahead and add my keyframe there. Let me also move it down to, let's say, I'll just do 90 frames right now because I, I want to save time. I'll, I'll even do 30 frames. So frame 31. And move this camera right over there. So it'll be a very, very quick scroll. And I. Now our camera's going to fly by. Uh, and now all we have to do is change our start and end frames to reflect accurately the frames of the video. Perfect. So we have our output container format set. We have our codex set. We have everything basically set up. So our last thing to do is basically just render out this animation. And I'm going to change my temporary file path to a folder that I've set up right here, just D temp VR video. And go ahead and render. I'm going to put a cut in this video. We'll jump back uh, after the sequence finished rendering. This can take anywhere from a couple minutes to maybe a few days, depending on the 
uh, how detailed your scene is, the complexity of the lights, all that. So we'll be back in just one second. And we're back. So the rendering just finished, and we have in our output folder our video.mp4. What we're going to do next is open up Google's metadata attachment tool. And there is a link that I'll provide to their website. Uh, there is a version available for Windows and for Mac. Sorry, Linux guys, you might be out of luck. Um, but I'm sure they'll get to one eventually. They also have a Python script that you can use, which I'm, I'm sure will run just fine in Linux. So what we want to do is go ahead and open up our video. I'm going to copy this path. And yes, this is in fact a spherical video. And yes, we use 3D top bottom. Our projection, yes, is equi rectangular. Let's go ahead and save as. And video injection will work just fine. So now that that's done, what we want to do is go to YouTube and upload our brand new video. The video injected, that is. You'll notice that the difference in file sizes is about one kilobyte, but let's take our video injected and upload this to YouTube. Under the advanced settings option, we'll see this video is 3D. Now, when you check this, by default, only side by side, left video and left side appears. Now, that's very, very peculiar, but let's go ahead and check that for now. Uh, again, we're going to come back and choose this, but it's perhaps a bug that uh, is yet to be fixed, but it's okay. We can change the setting to top bottom later. But side by side, left video on the left side. Uh, go ahead and make the standard changes. Uh, set your info, set whether or not it's public, private, unlisted. I'm going to make it private just because I've already got one up. And let's hit our done button. Now, if we go to our video, what we want to do is edit this video info. And we'll see that in just a second after it's finished loading. Or rather, I guess we can do info and settings right now. But if you click info and settings after it has been uploaded, you can go back to advanced settings and now top bottom, left on top will appear. So go ahead and hit that and save your changes. And now, if we go back to video, we will see. I'm going to play this a little more slowly. Uh, I only had a couple seconds of video, so I've got to slow it down. So now we'll be able to scroll around inside of our video. And if you had cardboard, then uh, you would see the little cardboard icon if you open this on YouTube in your uh, on your cell phone. So that's about it. That's all you need to uh, make a video, get it on YouTube, or make a video uh, for Cardboard 3D and get that on YouTube. Uh, I hope that help. I'm going to add some links to cardboard uh, tools, just to, or or rather Amazon links to cardboard items that you can purchase. We found this useful and do let me know if you uh, have any questions or comments.